Hey, what's up, guys? Shot of Steel back with another video for you guys. And since you seem to like the Sunny V2 video I did yesterday on Thousand Pound Sisters, I think you guys will enjoy this one, another Sunny V2 video about a fitness YouTuber who went clinically insane. Now, this is about Connor Murphy, who, if you guys know who that is, he's the guy who basically did, like, those public interviews. He would walk up to women, dressed all nerdy, and be like, ha ha, and what if I turn into a 10? And he just takes his friggin' shirt off, and boom, tsunami, the ground soaked, all the women just flooding it. You need a damn raincoat. This guy's, like, Casanova times 10, but that was his whole stick, right? And I always thought, like, man, this guy must be swimming in it because the dude looks friggin' jacked. Like, he's ripped to the gills. But apparently he had some issues that nobody could have, I guess, seen coming because he was on top of the world with his YouTube channel being huge. But this is his story, and I kind of wanted to check that out today because I guess you never really know what's going on inside someone's head, which is why I always try to be nice to people in public, because they might be having a lot tougher day than you realize. Every single conspiracy theory you ever know is 100% true. The, the government is reptilian overlords. Joe Rogan is in on it. Elon Musk is in on it. Tiger Woods Not is in on it. You can check Rogan. my story. I've been messaging them. I am forgetting and knowing that is how I created the plan. I can't do the plan if I knew it the whole time, because I'd be cracking up, so I make myself forget. I am infinitely intelligent, so I can make myself forget. Murphy. I mean, what the hell did Tiger Woods do to anybody? Besides cheating on his wife and all that. But yeah, Connor, eh, Connor Murphy, I wouldn't really blame it on Tiger Woods. Joe Rogan, now that's a different story. Joe, Joe Rogan deserves everything that comes his way. I'm just kidding. I love Joe Rogan. He once had a reputation as an extroverted, disciplined go-getter whose athleticism easily rivaled Look at other top-tier fitness influences. However, as the years rolled by and Connor's channel faded into irrelevance, his mental state would sadly decline alongside it. <laughs> I used to be so happy when I was a kid. This is called Tom's Market. I love this place because the Gospel of Thomas is where it's at. See, the people who wrote the Bible were... Or I was actually put into a psych... Wow, so he really, like, went off the friggin' rails. That's sad. Because... You just, you never really know. And if you have something like that going on, I encourage you to seek help, get into therapy. Uh, I'm lucky I don't have like anxiety or anything like that or depression going on with me. But yeah, some people just, you know, they're always fighting demons inside. And yeah, therapy helps a lot of people. Psych ward for over two weeks. When in the psych ward, he said he was God. He was offered antipsychotic medication. Every emotion in me is just rapid fire. The whole universe is me. I am consciousness. I know that mom has a stronger belief in heaven than you, dad. I, it's, it's an essence. You can feel it. You can feel God within someone. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, is a man who has officially lost his mind. Yeah, I mean, you guys can really see, like, just the difference in his demeanor. <laughs> or even, like, his physique. Like... He was ripped, taking off his shirt, and then you see him kind of just where he's been slacking on his, like, lifting and stuff like that. But, he, I mean, he still looks friggin' awesome, because you start at that point, there's not too far you're gonna slip. Even if you don't lift for a friggin' year, you're still gonna look pretty damn good. But, yeah, he obviously was struggling with something, and hopefully it went well for him. Like, hopefully he's out of that now, but, yeah, I, it's hard to watch somebody just kind of slipping like that. Break down Psych Ward's strange podcasts and the belief that he had become God were all captured right here on the YouTube platform with his path to insanity beginning on the 9th of January 2016 when Connor Murphy would post his very first video titled Connor Murphy Natural Body Transformation. Isn't it kind of crazy just to see like somebody document them like slipping and going off the rails? But look at him as a little kid, man. So obviously maybe he was picked on or something. He decided he was going to pick up the weights. I hadn't lifted weights since like freaking high school. I've been at it every day for like five months now. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of process, but I'm not on the gear like that guy probably is. Actually, I don't know, he looks pretty natural. Usually when they're on the gear, you see their veins popping out a lot more. The video began by stating that, quote, when he was younger, he wasn't really the coolest kid in his class before going on to show numerous photos of his skinny younger self. This would all change when he began to hit the weight room at the age of 13. Oh, man. Building a he got in the weight room early. So he was probably swimming in it in friggin' high school too. Like this guy was, ooh, and he's got the Hollister shirt. You know he was knocking them all off. 
he was just sitting there in the classroom. They were just throwing themselves at this guy. Pretty reasonable physique in the four years that followed. However, this had become even more impressive by his 21st birthday, having built his body to the point where he could stand out as a fitness YouTuber on the platform. He began by posting simple workout and nutrition guides in which it was clear that Connor had a genuine desire for improving the lives of his viewers. Yeah, because whenever you're like that ripped or whatever, I know a lot of it is your diet and like, just the stuff you're putting in because you can you can lift all you want and not get those kind of results or end up with abs and it's going to come down to like eating lean and all that stuff so it's to help you look as impressive as you possibly can for your next instagram picture or youtube video everyone wants to look good and I'm gonna help you guys out. These instructional videos were interwoven with basic fitness pranks, such as pretending to be a fitness mannequin in the mall. However, it would be- Bro, those Hollister mannequins were so friggin' wild. Like, they had them sitting there and they, like, I think they sprayed a whole bottle of cologne before they opened that store because you could smell it through the whole damn mall. Man, it's been forever since I've been to a friggin' mall. I wonder if Hollister is even still there. When Connor posted the first video in what would become his, his Aesthetics on Meagle series, that his channel began to explode. The premise of the series was pretty basic. He'd wait to match with females on. Bro, I mean, this is dangerous because you're it's like, you don't know their friggin' age. Those girls could be a lot younger. I don't, they look like they're of age, but stripping on Omegle for a bunch of random chicks, it's a little kind of. Mm, it probably a no go. Like, that's a little predatory guy. Omegle before taking his shirt off and simply recording their reaction. Within six months of posting his first aesthetics on Omegle video, Connor Murphy had passed 100,000 subscribers. However, the most notable part about this video was the information it revealed to Connor. People were interested in watching him. Bro, like when you look like that and you put in all the work, like all you have to do is take your shirt off and get women. <laughs> like it has to be so easy for that guy. Like watch. Anybody turned on yet? Nope, I don't think anybody got wet from that one. Take his shirt off in front of girls, spawning a new series of bizarre prank type videos in which he would leave the bedroom and instead look for excuses to take his shirt off in public. There were classics such as a Connor Murphy shirtless on the roof of Chipotle. Really? That's a classic? Because I think his whole thing was just Connor Murphy shirtless. Like, I don't think there's much more to that stick. Like, there's not a whole lot more he could do. He's shirtless. Bam. We've seen everything. Connor Murphy goes grocery shopping, and who could forget how to impress a girl instantly? So if I can impress you in just one second, I get both of your numbers. So when does the timer start? Right now? Ooh. So here's my phone, you guys. He needs to stop taking his shirt off, though, or I'm going to start questioning my sex, like, sexuality. It's freaking Valentine's Day. Like, I'm not trying to go gay on Valentine's Day, but if I keep watching Connor Murphy, I just might. Just put your numbers in. The videos were incredibly cringy. However, this was offset to some degree by Connor's self-awareness and likable attitude in the beginning. I really hope you don't think that I'm too much of a douchebag, but even if you do, please subscribe because my view to subscriber ratio is getting absolutely insane. I mean, taking your shirt off in front of women and that being your stick is kind of douchey. Uh, really, you probably don't have the world's greatest personality if that's all you have to do to get chicks. Because, like, a lot of you women, you want the ripped guy, but you want the fat guy's personality. So you're, like, looking for some kind of in-between. However, even with the likable attitude, without context, the videos were incredibly easy to roast. Individuals such as H3 at True Productions, who was reigning supreme in the commentary genre at the time, uploaded this video titled, My Girl is Leaving Me for This Guy, to an audience of over 9 million. So what do you think about Connor? I mean, it gets a little dangerous. If that guy's taking off his shirt in front of your girl, you might just have to fight him. Because if not, you might just lose your chick. <laughs> Murphy. First thing I think when I look at this guy is that when he's having sex, he's watching himself in the mirror. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's and while most true. YouTubers would see this <laughs> level of criticism as a negative, it simply gave Connor Murphy another opportunity to display his humility. Ethan Klein from H3H3 Productions. I've honestly been a longtime subscriber. All of his videos are hilarious, including his recent one. My. Oh, see, that's cool, man. Like, he's, he's humble at this point. Like, he hadn't let it all go to his head yet. That's what happens with a lot of these big YouTubers. Like, they get somewhere and then they forget where they started. Like, it's kind of disgusting when that happens. But, like, Ethan, I, I like him from H3H3, H3, I don't really like that dude at all. Because he let everything go to his head and now he just thinks that he's infallible and he can't do anything wrong. Idol, Connor Murphy. I think it's the best one yet. So you guys should totally go check it out. Providing a pathway for Connor Murphy to hit 1 million subscribers only a year and a half after beginning his channel. However, while such a milestone would have been incredibly exciting for Connor Murphy, it seemed to trigger Bro. a serious decline in his motivation for making videos as only six months after 
That guy next to him is a super creep, too. That What's his name? Jack Hanley. He just catches drunk girls outside of, like, the bar. And they're like, you want to make out with me? Like, it's disgusting. You're catching women that are drunk who really can't consent. And then you're jamming your tongue in their mouth. So that, that guy gives me the mega creeps, but... After achieving 1 million subscribers, he disappeared from the platform for over five months. Upon returning, he'd upload only eight videos within the space of a year, less than one per month, with only half of them cracking the 1 million view mark. Mm. As a result, Connor Murphy's average monthly view count began to tumble. He'd go. So he either lost his motivation or there was just no new tricks to do. Like he'd already taken his shirt off. You'd already friggin' seen it. Women had already gone, whoosh, floodgates open. Like what else do we need to see? from 20 million views per month at the beginning of 2018 to less than 5 million per month by the beginning of 2019, only 12 months later. In addition to his five month break, his decline in viewership had also been aided by a reduced interest for prank related video. Bro, this guy's nipples could cut freaking glass. Like, look at those things. Just freaking popping out there. In 2016 and 2017, his ideas were fresh and on par with the YouTube meta at the time. However, they were certainly feeling a little dated by 2019. As 2020 rolled around, the prank genre had not only become even more dated, but Connor was facing a new problem. Do you guys remember the YouTube prank genre? Like, that was so cringy. Like, uh, Vitaly, FouseyTube, all them. Vitaly lost his friggin' mind and beat that woman up on shrooms. Like, that's wild. Almost all of his viral ideas required outdoor social interaction with females, which had been halted by US lockdowns, forcing him to return to older video ideas. And I know it has been forever since I've made an Omega video, but since it's pretty much the only type of content I can film right now, I figured it was time to do another one. Connor returned to the streets whenever lockdowns were lifted. On 6th Street, thank goodness it is back, like the good old days. However, the overall limitation would drop his monthly view count to less than 3 million per a month yeah but you get that kind of traction like you can't just stop uploading or else people are going to stop caring and also i don't think you built any kind of connection on like you know, like people didn't really care to keep checking on you because all you were doing is taking off your shirt they didn't know you on a personal level like I, you just have to get to know your audience i feel like like i'll talk to whoever wants to talk to me i, I love talking to people who watch my videos forcing Connor to try a new career path. With a sane and coherent mind, Connor Murphy made the decision to move to LA in pursuit of becoming an actor. And while the potential the of a YouTube new career default. path was incredibly exciting, this would be the point at which things began to go downhill rapidly. Bro, but you almost think he moved to LA and it was like drugs or something because LA is crazy with the party scene. But it, this guy had some kind of things going on internally. Maybe he's just obsessive with the workout. I don't know. I think my mental health works a lot better now that I work out every morning for 30 minutes. Like, I just feel so accomplished when I'm done. Then I take a shower and I hit myself with, like, 30 seconds of cold water at the end. And that's something I just started today. But, man, I felt refreshed after that. For a while now, he's come under fire for his physique essentially deteriorating compared to when he first started YouTube. Yeah, it's you can like, see it. doesn't look nearly as good as he when he first started. It looks like he's probably lost about 10 to 15 pounds of muscle. I mean, let's not get it twisted. This guy still looks friggin' insanely good. But yeah, he's definitely declining. Maybe you could accredit that to getting off the gear or him dealing with something and just not being able to work out. That's why I said you never really know what's going on inside someone's head. Connor's physique was still incredibly impressive by average standards. True. It was becoming increasingly obvious that his body wasn't built to the same standard as it had been in the early days of his channel. Is this just me or is Connor looking a little smaller and less shredded? Not hating, just noticing. He Bro, is, your videos but... are awesome, but what's wrong with you? You don't look like a bodybuilder. Your abs are disappearing. You don't look shredded. Focus on your physique. I mean, if you lose that motivation, like your abs and all, that's kind of like if you're eating clean, that's what I was saying. Like you have to be eating the right diet to end up with those abs. But I got the six pack flabs, baby. And uh, yeah, it's fat boy winter anyway. These ladies need to stay warm. So you're going out. I'm in right now. Look at these muscles. Ooh. <laughs> See more, bro, although I enjoy watching your vids. Connor explained the reason for his loss of gains to be body fat percentage. And over the course of the last few months or whatever, I've probably gained like one to two percent body fat. The second thing, is man, is all? lighting. However, others speculated that his weight loss might have been the result of some kind of addiction. I mean, lighting, are you really going to accredit it to that? 
I think that's a reach, but yeah, I think you can start to see the kind of it start to unravel at this point where he's losing his motivation and maybe he's not getting the same response he initially was. So he kind of just is losing a little bit of his drive, but that's the point where you have to do it for you. That I love me some me and you know, just be your own biggest fan. Don't worry about what everybody else wants. I don't like that skinny, do I? You might, man. Maybe. Maybe. Lost I mean, you're definitely bigger than me, but yeah, I have lost a lot. Well, you weigh less. Me. You weigh less than me by a lot now because you've lost mm -hmm. uh, 31, 31 pounds. Something like that, yeah, yeah. These suspicions will be confirmed to some That's extent when his friend and fellow YouTuber, Patrick Lyons, would upload a video explaining that in early 2000. I mean, look at that guy. He's friggin' ripped to the gills too, but he looks natural. I don't see his veins popping out, but I'm not a... I mean, I'm not the, like, de facto, you know, source to come to if you want to see if somebody's on the gear. I don't friggin' know. I was 600 pounds. What the hell do I know about steroids? I'm not putting my, help, my heart through that shit. I already did enough to it. And 20, Connor tried psychedelics for the first time. Connor has oh. taken a substance called ayahuasca. For the first time, he took it about a year ago. And when he took it a year ago, it is what led to the first period of, like, concerning video content creation on his part uh, related to what he called enlightenment. The mentioned concerning video. I mean, I've seen people use ayahuasca to help them in all kinds of beneficial ways. Like, as far as, I saw a documentary about people using it to get off hardcore drugs. But, I mean, I always wondered if it could have, like, a bad spin on somebody or something like that. And it looks like he took a bad trip. Content began with this video in late 2020 titled, Why I Deleted My Old Videos and How to Access Them, in which his audience will witness the first example of Connor giving up his old gym-related branding, replacing it with a much more hippie vibe, wearing a hoodie and necklace while standing in front of a damp rainforest poster. Throughout the video, uh, Connor would discuss the many downsides of success in a relatable, articulate, and intelligent manner. I reached this point of success. The great. Okay, so you reached a point, you started to see a decline, and then you go all hippie on us? But, like, you, you're the people came there to see you be, like, a fitness YouTuber. They want to see your physique. They want to see you grinding, right? They don't want to hear about all these conspiracies and how, you know, you're saving the rainforest and stuff, which is a thing. Like, the rainforest does need saved. But that's not what your fan base is there for. That's not going to benefit you. Great physique. The girls. The money. And I became depressed. And while his new introspective message might have resonated with some, in the months that followed, it became blatantly obvious that Connor Murphy was diving deeper into what you might call the spirit oh, realm, as his man. ramblings became increasingly incoherent. Through deep meditation and consciousness work, you can realize that you can be free of the compulsive nature behind thought. Of course, you will still think, but there won't be any addictive qualities to that thought. You can detach it from your thoughts and be the observer of the thoughts. And he just sounds like somebody that's rambling right now. And it's hard to watch somebody go through like a psychological break like that. I just feel for the guy and I hope he's doing better now. But you almost just want to reach out and give the dude a hug. But I don't know how he would feel about that. But <laughs> the dude, like he's, he's suffering and he needs help. Rather than identify with the thought. That is probably the biggest addiction of all. At around the same time, Connor would post a picture to his Instagram holding a graduation certificate alongside a caption reading, I am now officially a doctor. That's right, I received an honorary- Yeah, but that thing said doctor of spirituality or something. That's, is that a thing? Or did you just buy that from India? Because I had a buddy in high school who bought a diploma because he dropped out for like $300 and it says he's like studied calculus, Shakespeare, a whole bunch of shit he knows nothing about doctorate in spirituality from the Los Angeles Development Church and Institute simply from making a donation. This honorary degree oh, lets me legally God. use the doctor title in front of my name. I can legally be referred to as Dr. Connor Murphy. His former friend and fellow YouTuber Patrick Lyons, who had originally updated everyone on- That's crazy, bro. So am I a doctor? My Xbox Live, live gamer tag used to be Dr. Poonjabs. Does that mean that I'm officially a doctor too? No, I don't think so. Connor's ayahuasca use, then went on to explain that Connor's dosage had increased substantially. He took that ayahuasca Oscar the first time uh, a year ago and I don't know where along the lines these things happened but he has increased his frequency of consumption to mm. every two hours which would also be reiterated bro taking a psychedelic every two hours like I know micro dosing is a thing for people in LA and like Silicon Valley or whatever but every two hours that's insane 
you're probably poisoning yourself at that point. ...rated by another friend of Connor called Jane. I asked Connor, how often do you do ayahuasca? And he said, every two hours. Connor's extreme dosage would become apparent when a channel called Micah would upload a video titled We Went to Save Connor Murphy, in which Connor's apartment could be seen in Bro, did you really have to make a video? Because if you were genuinely going there to help the guy, you didn't need to use it for clout or a video. Just go there and be a friend, like genuinely help somebody. Reach out and help them just because it's not going to benefit you, but you're going to help them. Like the fact you filmed the video, I know nothing about you, but I don't think what you're doing is genuine at that point. I would not have gone about it that way. I would have just went there to help the guy. In complete and utter disarray, shown similarly in Jane's wow. video. I drove my car to Connor's apartment complex. There were a bunch of boxes and trash bags in front of his door. We went inside his apartment and this is what I saw. The stack of wow, bro, that's like some hoarder stuff, which I, I love watching that hoarding show or whatever too. That's always insane to me, but the stuff that people do, but this is a guy who's clearly mentally having a breakdown. The boxes was so huge that it took up half of the apartment and spilled out through the front door. Connor apologized for it being so messy, but said that he hadn't had time to clean because he'd been so busy making content. I've just been so focused on giving up all this content. I just haven't had time uh, to clean. That's why I'm here. So I just started. But what content is he making? Cause he, he stopped doing that. Does he have a OnlyFans? I don't know. Is he sitting there selling feet pics on Instagram at that point? I'll, like, I always joke about this, but I'll consider myself a YouTuber and consider myself famous when I have a wiki feet and somebody wants to beat off to these size 15s or make love to these arches. That's when I'll consider myself famous. <laughs> Unboxing the mountain of packages and it was a bunch of totally random stuff. Just a few of the things were a Harry Potter invisibility cloak, 12 Bro, cans of I oxygen, want one of those. and a cat tower. I asked him if he had a cat and he said no. Before he'd go on to imply that he'd completely given up on his bodybuilding diet. How you been getting all your calories in? I just eat whatever I want now. Later in the video, uh, Connor's mental health problems will be put on full display. My name is Stewie, Stewie Griffin in Belle Delphine. You like this? I'm about to eat some vegan. Oh my god, why are you guys filming this? Like, help him. You don't need to film it. This guy needs help. He doesn't need people like sitting there. Uh, oh, this is peak content. We're gonna get the guy who used to take his shirt off having a mental break. Like, screw you, bro. But on a second note, I really want a friggin' invisibility cloak. Where could I buy one of those? In macaroni and cheese vegan, it's made out of plants, just like your... <laughs> when the two guys who were filming the video left Connor's house, they'd receive this call. The giant Zoom call, the world is on a giant Zoom call, please. I'm begging you, man, I'll pay you anything. Please, get over here. Dude, yeah, I'll let you know, we probably will. I'm giving you all the money in the world, it's a worldwide Zoom call. All right, bro. Okay, no, thank you, uh, uh, please come back here, thank you. Dude, oh my- Showing that- Bro, nothing is genuine about what you're doing. We went to save Connor Murphy and you're sitting there like, oh my god, that's pissing me off. Like, why? Why not just help the guy because you're a decent human being? Like, okay, if they, he called me, I have 6,000 subs. You don't think my channel would take off if I recorded this famous YouTuber having a mental break? Probably. But I'm not gonna take it there because I'm not a scumbag. It clearly wasn't fake. In other videos, Connor appeared more sane. However, there were still signs of mental illness, such as this video in which he would attempt to pick up girls by telling them that he had become God. I am God. Okay. I'm yeah. God. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you feel about that? I mean, why do you think you're God? Interesting. So, well, why do you think that I even exist? How is she not terrified and running away from this dude right now? Like, that is terrifying. This guy stops you outside a bar, starts telling you he's a god, and you need to repent by blowing him or something. Like, run the hell away. This dude is, like, clearly not in the right mind. Connor's God complex would then lead him to produce even stranger videos, such as this one titled Failing to Enlighten My oh, Parents, in which he would parents. sit in a Zoom call rambling incoherently to his mother and father for an hour and a half straight. If you truly had faith and you knew that heaven on earth existed, that's the only thing you'd be searching for. You wouldn't be working. You wouldn't be stressing. All you would be doing is doing everything you can. Bro, 2.46 million. He has a huge YouTube channel. Could you imagine how his family feels right now? They're so helpless. They can't do anything to get him off of this, like, rambling and this destructive path he's on. And they're probably not even in the same state. And he's like, he's just not listening to them. Maybe he's hearing them, but he's not listening. 
Satan to experience heaven on earth. Accompanying these incoherent ramblings was a complete overhaul of his Instagram from a former aesthetic showground to a psychedelic wasteland. He's starting to wear like costumes and shit and he's like going around at nighttime doing weird stuff and he starts posting these uh Mario became enlightened when he realized that he is the pixels. You are living in the matrix. Bro, this guy ate one too many Mario mushrooms and leveled up because he is clearly tripping balls right now. Like, I had a few bad trips when I was younger because I did try mushrooms a few times. Statute of limitations, come get me. <laughs> I don't even think, is it illegal? Yeah, definitely, probably illegal. But one time I did it in a haunted house and I swear to God, I saw a baby crawling down the hall and I jumped out of a second story window. Another time, I swear to God, I got chased home by werewolves the whole time home. And then there was another time I had like a mild trip and I walked around a circle for like three hours in the middle of this like super like hoity-toity part of town which <laughs> i don't think they like the kid walking around like thinking he's seeing shit tripping balls in the middle of their like development connor zad uh call me the happy hatter and he's wearing some costume in the early days of his channel connor had talked about his passion for golf my two main more serious sports were basketball and golf I played those both in high school and I play golf in college right now. Which would be reignited in the strangest way after he had become enlightened, as explained Bro, by Derek that. from More Plates, More Dates. I look at my DMs and I'm in this weird group and it's called like Connor's like enlightened cult or something. The members of this group, it's like Connor, me, Tiger Woods. The oh my God, he's starting his own little like golfing cult. I tried to golf one time and I threw the club further than I hit the ball because I accident like my hands were slippery, right? And the club just went whoosh and the ball just kind of rolled down the hill. And I was like, well, not trying that again. PGA Tour, Team Star, like some, like the weirdest smorgasbord combination of individuals ever. And Connor is just like posting weird voice messages in his Matthew McConaughey accent. And I'm like, like, what are we doing here, dude? Like, what is going on? And presumably his uh, enlightenment sort of led him towards the realization that he was going to win um, a major golf tournament professionally as far as... Yeah, see, this is clearly someone who just has like all these crazy and just unhinged ideas of what's going to happen. And that's not connected to reality. And how do you really help someone that's going through something like that? Because... I wouldn't even know where to start, but yeah, like what what can you do to help the guy? As far as I understand. In the same video, Derek would go on to explain that Connor had gone so far off the rails that he began posting his saved passwords to his public Instagram. Him showing oh every God. single password on his phone that is saved, like every single account he has and the email associated with it. So like Bank of America, Amazon, even his Bang Energy password, apparently. Derek would then host a podcast to Holy shit, this guy gave away all his passwords to everything. His money was like instantly friggin' gone. How many calls have you guys got about your car's extended warranty or from friggin' Amazon where the guy's like from friggin' India and telling you somebody bought an iPhone on your account? Sounds fishy. Talking about Connor Murphy with another YouTuber who would state that his actions seemed indicative of schizophrenia. That is psychotic behavior. Yeah. Like yeah. that is very indicative of somebody with lingering mental instabilities, uh, such as a family history of schizophrenia. And while it didn't yeah, seem sure. like things could possibly get any worse, they were about to. Connor's audience would come to find out that with every high, there's an equivalent low after he'd upload a video simply titled goodbye. Oh no, I hate when YouTubers do that. And they're, they're like, yeah, goodbye 2022. It's time to start the new year, baby. And like this guy, Clearly, he's trying to hint that he's going to self-delete himself. I'm not allowed to say the word on YouTube. But, yeah, like, clearly, this is very leading. And I, hopefully, people were able to reach out to the cops and get him some help or something. In this video, Connor would explain that he felt as though he was going insane, being at his, quote, mental breaking point. What is happening? I've gone literally mentally insane. This is tough the past to watch. I don't understand. I feel my mental break. He then go on to state that he was doing anything to try and show his family how to be happy. For six days I've stayed up, I haven't slept. I wrote I wrote a 70 page book in two days to try to explain happiness to them. Bro, this is oh, it's so hard for me to watch because luckily I, I don't like I don't have to deal with any of these kind of mental health issues. I'm a pretty happy guy, thank God. My dad has like crippling anxiety. He used to say he would drive down the street and it felt like the cars were coming back at him. 
And I think that stems from his childhood and his dad beating him and stuff, which my grandfather died before I was born. He had a seizure and died from alcohol withdrawal. So yeah, like my dad does have it. Thank God I don't have any kind of mental issues, but he's a tougher man than me because he deals with it every day and keeps moving. I mean, it's it's crazy, but it's, yeah, I'm crazy, but I just want them to be happy. I'm trying to save their lives. They don't realize how happy they are. Before going on to leak his address. You can come here to 16710. Bro, how scary is it? Like, how many people do you think showed up? Like, do you think at this point there was any wim like women that just showed up and were like, hey, Connor Murphy, like, we want to screw you because he still looks pretty damn good, even if he's crazy. Like, maybe crazy people have better sex or something. Maybe he would blow some chicks back out if she just showed up because he's still ripped. Like, he could still get it on. Like, yeah. Maybe that's a little out of line, but yeah, you know, you know what I'm thinking? Posting his address in a public YouTube video, police would pay him a visit before taking him to a psych ward where he would remain for two weeks. So in the process, he'd remain called. in contact with his best friend, who'd state that even after being put in a mental hospital, Connor was unable to stop talking about his spiritual enlightenment. So Connor spent two weeks in a psych ward and I called him uh. every few days. Rather, he called me and we talked every few days and he was able to get to a point where he was able to hold a normal conversation and speak normally. But yet one thing remained the same. The one thing that stayed the same was he just didn't want to talk about anything other than his enlightenment and his awakenment. Yeah, so like these delusions of grandeur where he thinks he's literally God, like he's somewhat coming out of that state, but he's still somewhat there. Like at least he's coherent at that point. He's not sitting there calling himself Stewie or whatever. But yeah, he clearly is still going to need like ongoing help and ongoing treatment. But thank God somebody at least got him some help for the time being because he was going down a very scary path that could have ended way too abruptly, you know what I mean? It seemed to be the only thing that mattered to him. After being let out of the psych ward, Connor would upload a video titled, Yes, I'm Alive and I'm Sorry, in which he would state that the goodbye video was all an act, done for the purpose of potentially grabbing the attention of a movie studio. I had this crazy idea. I would make some acting reels that were so dramatic so controversial that it would grab the attention of producers bro you're not fooling anybody with that like i'm he does sound much better at this point but like just own up to it like hey yeah i was going through some stuff i needed some help don't sit there and try to deflect like he might still be dealing with some of it in this point and he's just like not willing to accept what has happened to him because to go from such such highs to such lows it's hard for anybody to see, especially a YouTube audience where they were like almost calling you God and then you got to the point where you believed it yourself. And this would be my one final shot at becoming an actor in Los Angeles. However, at a later date, he'd gone to release the book that he'd been discussing in the original Goodbye video. I wrote a 70 page book in two days. In which he would state that he planned on replicating the path of Jesus by faking his death so more people could focus on his spiritual message. Oh, what if I uncovered God. the true knowledge and was able to spread it to the world? What if I thought up the most mind blowing YouTube stunt of all time to spread it? What if I could start to awaken other people and change the world? What if I could actually tell the modern day story of Jesus? I mean, happiness is subjective. Like, everyone has a different version of happiness and what makes them happy. So, I don't know what he was trying to preach here, but, yeah, happiness is different for each person. Like, maybe, you know, your children make you happy or going to the gym, working out makes you happy. Like, whatever makes you happy, continue to do it. Like, right now, making YouTube videos makes me happy, so I'm going to keep doing that, so... I had some work to do before showing that the psych ward did little to bring him back to reality in another statement reading I recently had what the doctors called a manic episode and I call a spiritual awakening Okay, I admit there might have been some mania involved, but I can promise you not an ounce of it was negative Perhaps in his own mind none of it was negative However, his total subscriber graph told a different story since he began to lose his mind in 2020 Connor has lost over hundred and fifty thousand subscribers and now barely gains over a million views per yeah I mean at some point you're just the one trick pony who takes his shirt off and lost his mind once his views started to go down. Like, I don't know if that's what caused the decline in his mental health. If he thought, you know, he was at this high of high, but he was showing some signs of it before. Like even when he just started to kind of go away from the lifting weights and what made him happy and then going down this ayahuasca like route. So yeah, he clearly had some stuff lingering in the back of his mind that was possibly bothering him. 
but yeah, it's hard to see somebody go into a manic state like that and then come out of it and still be like a little in denial. Like, yeah, maybe there was some mania involved, but it was a spiritual awakening. Like, at that point, like, he clearly is still dealing with it a little, and I hope he's much better today. A month. He'd also mentioned in a recent video that he didn't have any money left. The moral of this story is that I'm broke. So if you have a business opportunity for me, maybe you want to help me get some brand deals and make some commission. At this point, I have zero shame and I'm open to pretty much anything. However, he- Bro, I got an idea. You could sell me that friggin' invisibility cloak. I want that thing. That sounds freaking awesome. But I don't think his, his invisibility cloak is going to fit my big ass. But yeah. I would try to squeeze into that damn thing. It does sound fairly sarcastic, so this might have been a joke. The silver lining to the story is that Connor has deleted almost all evidence Bro, of his crazy spiritual phase, too. replacing it with fitness content as he had posted in the past. His spiritual channel titled Connor Murphy Talks, on which he used to post incoherent ramblings, went completely silent until one month ago, at which point Connor returned with a normal articulate story relating to his high school days, in which he's looking and sounding substantially healthier than- Bro, his like spirituality like channel still has 10 times the subscribers as mine does so i'm trying to be like the rambling you like and you were all the way up here at like 2.46 million and i just want to be the version of you where like you're like out there like that's who i want to be but yeah it, it's hard to watch somebody go through that but the, he is saying that he sounds much better right here so i'm happy that he's doing better today and i wish him nothing but the best because i remember him when he first started taking his shirt off and me seeing it being like damn this guy must just be clapping cheeks all over town than he had been 12 months ago. Almost all of his comments discuss the obvious recent improvement in Connor's life, so hopefully his insanity was nothing more than a minor hiccup in what will become an incredibly successful life over the long term. Yeah, I'm hoping this guy has like some huge like redemption arc where he's just coming back. That's what I like to say. I like to say I'm on my redemption arc because I got up to that 605 pound mark and I'm just now working my way back and focusing on me and my physical health, but I, I really neglect my mental health because I feel like I'm a pretty happy guy and I, I don't need that. But it seems like this guy needs the therapy or all the help he could get. And I'm happy that he seems to be doing better right here. But all right. Happy Valentine's Day, guys. I know it's a, a day late if you're watching this now. But uh, if you got somebody that loves you, love them back. If you don't got anyone that loves you, grab a bottle of Jergens and love yourself. <laughs> if you're a woman, grab your neck massager. But anyways... Alright guys, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you later. Peace.